Would you believe me? If I told you, your lifestyle can make or break your health. Believe it, it's true. To understand this important statement, I need to ask you some not so important questions. How many of you exercise regularly? I think you have a gym over here, right? Who uses that gym regularly? Hands full of people. How many of you eat healthy in spite of the food that we are going to eat? Hands full. How many of you? Oh, I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you. How many of you sleep in the night for six, seven, eight hours? Why are these questions so important? These questions are important because the answers to these questions are going to form your lifestyle. So what is this lifestyle that I am talking about? Lifestyle is nothing what you do every day. It's all how you live every day. Your habits you put together make your routine. And when this routine is repeated over and over again, you have a lifestyle. Let's break it down a little bit more. Lifestyle is broken down into six pillars. First pillar, nutrition and hydration. What you eat, why you eat, how you eat, when you eat, how much water you drink. Second pillar, movement, exercise. Do you go to the gym? Do you do yoga? Are you sitting for six hours in front of the laptop, your phone, or your study? Pillar number three, your sleep. Pillar number four, stress levels. Your emotional health, your mental health. Are you capable of handling with your stress? Pillar number five, something which is very important for you and me both, addiction. Smoking, this includes vaping also. I'm very particular, vaping is a part of smoking. Drug abuse, alcohol, pain drinking alcohol, all come under addiction. But these are the obvious addictions. What are the not so obvious addictions? Tea, coffee, binging, scrolling, binge watching. All of this can eventually make you dependent, which will push you into addiction. Last but not the least, sixth pillar. Someone told me yesterday that it is your campus, there are young students getting diabetes. So if you don't take care of your lifestyle, you're bound to get lifestyle disorders like diabetes. So when you suffer from diabetes, thyroid, PCOS, what's going to happen? You might be using medication, supplements. You might need to monitor your sugar just to understand whether you're getting better or worse. So your sixth pillar is medicines and monitoring. But why is this so important? Why is lifestyle so important? Because today it's all we all accept it. That is important because manage, control, postpone, prevent any sort of chronic disorder. Even if there's family history of it. Or you want to get very efficient in your studies. You want to get placed at Google, Amazon. You want to be as smart as Einstein. You want to be as fast as Bolt. You want to be as strong as Hull. It will only happen if you change what you do every day. And that's your next step. But we all know this. I'm sure most of you know how important lifestyle is. But we still don't do it. Why don't we want to take care of ourselves? Why not? Because life comes in the way of lifestyle. So what is this life that I'm talking about? The first most important life is your mindset. The inability, your inability to prioritize your health is your biggest problem. I know you are young. Of course you are young. You think you can do it tomorrow. But I totally believe that tomorrow never comes. So whatever you want to start, you need to start today. Let's imagine a situation. I think New York is down the corner, first of Jan. Or let's say it even more urgent. Monday, tomorrow is Monday, right? And we all like to start something new on Monday. So let's say you are excited that you are going to start exercising on Monday. Monday came, Monday went, you didn't exercise. So what life came in the way of Monday? What happened? 
Someone will say, I couldn't get up in the morning. Why could you get up in the morning? Because I slept late at night. Why did you sleep late at night? Because I was finished finishing an assignment. My friends came over to surprise me. I had to go to my friend's house because it was his birthday. Or, or, accidentally, my laptop flew across the room, turned itself on, and started playing that next series that I've been wanting to watch. My poor brain just couldn't stop after one, two episodes, and I think I saw the entire series in the entire night. No? Okay. My alarm didn't ring. My alarm rang, but my mother or my roommate put it off because they wanted me to sleep longer. I got up. I brushed my teeth. I changed my clothes. But as I was moving out of my room, my very, very comfortable bed, my pillow, my blanket started falling out to me. I didn't want to breathe that hard, so I went back and said, Talk to me. Okay, let's ask another scenario. You are exercising, you are eating well, you are sleeping well too. And it's been three months. But another life is going to come in the way of your lifestyle. What is this life? You have exams coming up. Now that's a big one, right? You need all the time in the world to study. So what is the first thing that stops? Exercise. I can use that one hour to study. Correct? It's not that you stop binging on uh, social media or something, but you stop exercising. Then you say, okay, fine, now there's too much to study. My sleep needs to get compromised because I need more time. Then I'm comfort eating, I want chocolates, I want pastry. Possible. Why? Because I'm so tense. I'm nervous. Slowly, steadily, I start to get anxious. People and so social media start coming and telling you, oh, you have anxiety. Oh, you have anxiety disorder. By the time, suppose you realize what is happening, you tell yourself, it's okay. Once the exams are over, I'll come back to take care of myself. Well, it's been three months that the exams are not over, but you haven't started taking care of yourself again. Something similar happened to me when my life came into the way of my life. I was in my final FBS. Believe me, Final MBBS is one of the most important years, and you all agree to that, right? I was upset. All I have sorted in my head. I was in a very stable five year relationship. I was about to get married once I got my degree. And I was relatively a decent student. So I was okay with studies. I was into sports. I was eating well, everything was going well. But obviously, life doesn't go as you plan, right? So instead of getting married, I had a breakup. And please understand that back then I still emotional, but I was very immature and emotional at that time. So that helped me. It was more than a thing. If you can go through this, nothing can come. I mean, once you survive this, you can handle anything in the world. But that time I did not know that I was going to survive. So it was one of the most painful situations that I had ever been in. It was unbelievable that this had happened. I stopped eating it, but I was eating absolutely crap. I was drowning, almost drowning myself in alcohol. Because alcohol helps you numb the pain, right? That's how it is. Water, exercise, who cares? I don't feel like doing it. I was pumping classes, I was lagging behind in studies, and everything was going down there. Then one fine day, I was walking my friend's dog, and it was a windy day. So the wind blew across my abdomen in such a way that my t-shirt stuck to my abdomen. And it was a little odd because I felt something extra. It was a punch, it was a belly. Now what you don't know is that back then, I was only 45 kilos. So I was, my pet name was Single Pussy. Single pussy to the extent that if I sit under the fan, I will blow away. Single pussy to the extent that Akshay doesn't need an air ticket. He doesn't need a seat, he fits between the seats. So when you have a watch on a single pussy like this, it's like someone has drawn a belly on a stick figure. You know what a stick figure is? Who does that? But it happened to me. 
By then I was only already in my fourth MBA, so I understood what the repercussions or what the problems were of having belly fat. Now you should understand that belly fat is something called as visceral fat. What is visceral fat? Your internal fat. This internal fat can sit on your liver, your pancreas, your kidneys, your heart. And obviously, that's not a good thing. So when I put two things together, on one side, I had my breakup, which was making me mentally unstable, emotionally draining me, my mental health had taken a hit. On the other side, I had this belly fat, which was draining my physical health. Something hit me. Something sparked inside me and I said, that's it. I have to get my lifestyle back. In the next maybe one or two weeks, I joined the gym. I found a very sweet trainer who promised to make me Arnold Schwarzenegger in three months. Imagine single person becoming Arnold Schwarzenegger in three months. Of course, it was a whole thing, but I'm very grateful to him because he helped me start my gym. So the three months started. They were obviously not difficult because to actually pick yourself up and reach the gym. For the task in itself, it's because you don't feel like doing it, why should you do it? But anyway, it wasn't that difficult either. Though it was already two months, obviously I was nowhere close to Armand. But something was nice, something felt nice. I could see a muscle pop here and there, some veins popping somewhere. My strength had definitely increased because I was picking up heavier. And very sweet passerby used to tell me, Akshat, you're doing well, keep going. And I believed them. I believed them that I was doing well. Of course, it has been 15 years now and I'm not in a country so hard now. But that's okay. Because my goals have changed. I believe that I can stay healthy for the rest of my life if I continue my healthy lifestyle. I believe that maybe I don't have to have diabetes. I have family history of diabetes. But I don't have to have that. I don't have to have hypertension. I don't have to have heart disease. Maybe I might never get admitted to a hospital. And the way I see it is, if I can do it, so can you. Of course, these are very small lives that I've spoken about today. There are grave issues, grave problems, grave lives which come into your lives. People fighting their sexual orientation, physical abuse, sexual abuse, parents going through divorces, people getting married, people not getting married, people getting pregnant, people not getting pregnant. COVID happens, there are legal issues. Any of these things can show you off that. But the way I see it is, you still have to keep going. And if you might you keep, you might you keep going, if you maintain a decently healthy lifestyle, doesn't have to be perfect. You can take care of yourself. So you want to know is that I'm a doctor. But what you don't know is I'm actually a teacher also. And if anybody follows me on social media, you might find me doing all of this. And this. That's how I teach on social media. Okay? They call me the dancing doctor, by the way. So today, because I'm a teacher, I'm going to leave you with six points as homework. My wife insisted that I should leave you with only five, but I'm a giver, so I'm going to give you all six points. Okay? These six things, if you do, you will have a relatively healthy lifestyle. Fair enough? Point number one, eat within an hour of makeup. It can be a fruit, it can be some nuts, anything light is okay. And stop eating two to three hours before bedtime. Point number two, carry a bottle of water wherever you go. It's the best way to hydrate yourself. Point number three, exercise, move, stretch, do something, do whatever you want, even if you have exams going on, even if you're very, very busy. Half your problems will go away, joint pain, uh, acidity, constipation, half your problems will get better if you just move. Point number four, sleep. Prioritize your sleep with one of the most underestimated pillars. If you are like me, 
I used to think sleeping is a thorough waste of time. Thorough waste of time. If I slept in the afternoon, I used to cry. Oh, I have wasted two hours, one hour of my life. But no, I was very wrong. Don't do that. Sleep on priority. Point number, which point am I reading? Five. Don't smoke. Don't vape, don't smoke, no substances, no drugs, whatever you call it, you can smoke, stop doing it. Okay? It doesn't make you look cool. It's fine, I just do it with a statutory warning in the in the right side saying that don't y'all should not do it, but they do it. But y'all don't look cool doing it, and y'all will definitely not look cool when you're a sick because of it. Stop binging on alcohol. Don't drink alcohol because you're sad, you're upset, you're happy. Or you want to numb the pain the way I did it. You will get dependent on these substances and it will only get worse from there. Last but not the least, write. In today's world of technology, no one needs to write, but write. Write what you think, write what you feel, write what you need to do. Because when you write, you create mind space. The more mental work you do, the harder it becomes, the more unclear it becomes. Once you write, you will see the clarity come, you will see the magic come. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to open your minds, your eyes, your ears to a possibility of a better, healthier tomorrow. I know you're young, I know I'm young, but believe it or not, you can't take it for granted because we are all getting older every day. Age is going to increase. So bottom line, I'm here to give you a chance, an opportunity, a choice to help you become better versions of yourself, improve the quality of your life by learning to manage your life by using lifestyle. Thank you.